Zenga! Oh, for fuck's sake, that is stinking. Oh, Jesus. Zenga! Hunter, don't. For fuck's sake. Zenga, don't eat it. Fuck, don't eat it. Zenga! Hey, that's disgusting, leave it! Oh, get it everywhere! Fuck's sake, Zenga! Oh, God, that's stinking! I was going to sit here. I could have come back to fucking the outside. Oh, Jesus, Zenga, who's the inside? That is rotten. Smell what comes out that lassie, fucking hell. Who's my incense? Oh, Jesus. Right. What am I doing with this? Who is up here? Jesus, there's not enough incense in the world for your bills. I'm not going to have to sit in. It's too windy out. Jesus, Senga. Oh, there she is. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Senga, you get shit all over your feet. So don't knock my co coffee over. Under my arm. Luna, get off me! Let's see, oh, it's my turn. Oh, that's better. Oh, don't stand in my. Oh, for fuck's sake, Luna! Oh, they made me the wee man. Did your paw just. Did you just stand in it? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Oh, fucking handsome! I'm sorry, how is it even possible? <laughs> Don't knock it over again. See you. Oops. So fucking handsome. <laughs> oh, Bruce has just been the vet um, for Emily. Sunshine eyes. Um. So Emily, um, I think Emily's got a woman infection. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's charging. Um, I think Emily's got a woman infection. Um, <clears throat> she had her season. And that's how it's been a bit of a delay because she had her season and then <clears throat> I thought that's why like sometimes she goes off her food for a while. So I, like for the first few days I thought that's all it was and maybe it was. But she's developed this um, pyometra I think after her season. Um, and it's an open pyometra so it is coming out but um, she's really cold. See my, um, yesterday my thermometer um, was reading like low like there was no reading so I thought it was the thermometer I actually meant to check it again and I forgot um, but when Bruce went to check her um, the day he said it's not even reading so I think she's so sick now um, like this is this is what Bruce and I were talking about this is I really like Bruce um, I'm really lucky to have the vets I've got it's it's hard it's hard getting help for farmed animals, um, nobody cares. And even although they're farm vets and there is like a still a sort of farm, you know, most of their clients are farmers rather than this sort of thing. You know, Bruce is like, he's so, that's what he was saying the day we were talking about it and there's this like grey area. Um, there's this moral grey area because the choices for Emily now are, and this is, this is what I was saying to Bruce, this is actually the hardest bit of this. See, knowing when, knowing what, 
trying to, as I said to Bruce, like taking yourself out of it almost entirely, that's really difficult because you're bringing weight so much, you know, I'm, I'm bringing the possibility of guilt, like I'm trying to avoid guilt because we do, like who wants to feel guilty? <laughs> Fucking sucks. Um, so it's, I, I'm not, I'm trying, I am, and, and that, well, I suppose I'm trying to avoid my own guilt in that way because I'm trying to do, regardless of what I want, I mean, of course I don't want Emily to die, of course I don't, um, but I know she's gonna, like that's the, that's the stage we're at is that Emily's very, very sick, she's, um, she's an old, is that right? No, it's just wind. She's a very old lady, well, not a very old lady, but I love you. Um, she'll be eight, seven, eight. I need to look at her birth certificate, but she's either seven or eight. And um, I think she's seven. So she's kind of an older, middle-aged lady. Um, she's had this womb infection and maybe I should have noticed sooner, maybe I couldn't have noticed sooner. That's just something that I just don't, I don't know. Um, as soon as I realised there was a discharge, which made me realise that it was a, probably a I think it's just the, I think it's just the padlock, pants. I think it's just the padlock, son, it's all right. Pants, pants, come on, it's all right, son. Good boy, well done. Come on, Lens. Thanks, son. Thanks, son. So it's all right, woman, well, I've got your back. We'll fucking get them. Which might be you lot in that wee thing. Where is she? Eh, uh, leave it alone. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, for fuck's sake, leave it alone. Luna, get down. Fuck's sake. Hey, what was I saying? It's too windy out here. It's nice out here, actually. Oh, um, hey, we in? You coming up? Come on. Oh, you're filthy. Look at the state of you. <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> You're gonna need a shower, young lady. Look at you. <laughs> what have you been up to? Just as you've been busy? Have you been busy snags? Why are you so fucking cute? Oh, hi, Mitz. Am I gonna get a Mitz kiss? No, no Mitz kiss today. Mitz, Mitz, give us a kiss. No. I never gave me all my kiss. I love you. Hey, where was I? Oh, I, Bruce and I were talking about the, um, this kind of moral grey area at the end. Um, so the choices I've got, so this is, and this is what I really like about Bruce. He's, as he said the day, he's bluntly honest, and I like blunt honesty. Um, I want to, he's got the information, the knowledge, he knows what, he's been, he's, he's killed pigs before. Um, and he knows what's going to happen, so he can tell me that, and then he can tell me what's going to happen if I don't do that. <clears throat> and then it's my decision to make, as he said, he's a facilitator, and I really like that. And that's kind of what that's what we're, we're having a conversation about. And we always seem to have these conversations when Bruce comes. I really like it because he's seen it from one point of view, like another point of view, um, and like he says, he's a facilitator. He can give the information and the, inform the advice and the knowledge. Um, and then it's up to me to make the decision based on what I know about um, mainly what mainly what I bring is I know I know who I know the patient I know who I know Emily like and I know I, I'm making a decision for her but based on what she has told me her whole life who she is what she wants what I think known her like I do what she would want now and the the options are um that like euthanasia and pigs is brutal the, their veins he was explaining like their veins are so deep um he said there's just so much pig and their veins are so deep that um getting to the jugular is almost impossible the, the only vein you can really find is the I can't remember the name but it just is basically like just deep inside the chest so far and it's almost the heart and then um, get 
and give them a massive dose of sedative, like an entire bottle of sedative beforehand and hope that works. And he said, but it's messy. There's a lot of squealing. There's a lot of shouting and screaming and it's very difficult for him. And it's it, the other alternative to that is a captive bolt pistol. Um, but because of that, their skulls are so thick, um, it's not guaranteed. Or a shotgun. And I don't want any of those for her. Um, I don't want her to have a violent death. Um, and this is the this is the bit where so sort of like an in, it's it's trusting myself to know that I'm making the decision for her like taking myself out it like if that would be better for her then maybe that's what I should do um the the, the way that I don't want to um but if I do that then she's not going to be able to be with her family. It's still going to be traumatic because we're still going to have to stay and then she'll know that something's up. This is the thing like when when you in, inject someone, they like overdose someone in that way, like I think they know it's being done to them. It's the difference between dying, knowing you're dying and accepting it and although it could, that might be more physically 